Hey, Scruffy. Can I tear my screen? And right on time. There's still sunlight left, too. Oh, you're meowy tonight. So I have a fresh can of Edie Pate with Ocean Whitefish. And I poured all the grease or gravy or whatever it is into the bowl. So I think I'll make it taste better. Okay. Okay, you're already ready to eat, huh? <clears throat> I did bring out your water. So, don't have to put that down. Just walk past you so I can get to the table. Okay, put the food on the table, get the glove. Okay. And, oh, the yeah, I forgot something looks like move the mat and move the brush. I if that raccoon was here. So I don't think it was the wind. And then could have been scruffy, but I don't normally see scruffy moving things like that. So I seen him move the scratcher, but it's because he's using it. But I don't think he moves the brush. I never did find that uh, double-sided brush that I really liked. So something stole it. Raccoon, maybe a big pack rat. Okay, he should be hunt, hunting those pack rats. So he's not doing a good job if it was a pack rat. Yeah, he likes standing on the mat. I should have moved the mat for him. Yeah, he's too close again. He wants to be on the mat, but it's right up against the chair. It's hard for my arm to fit that close. So I'm going to move the mat. There you go. Not see much better, huh? Looks like he was reacting there. Looks like he was going in for a pet, and then he said, mm, no, maybe not. Not sure what that was, but at least he didn't strike. So he smacked me last night. So I didn't feel any claws, but he, he definitely claw slapped me. I rechecked the footage just to see if there was something obvious that I did that I set him off, and I didn't see anything. So that's the first strike Scruffy's made in maybe over a week, maybe two. It's been pretty good recently. So, let's see. Yeah, I woke up late today. I actually woke up early. And I was. My legs were really tired. And it was pretty early. I didn't really want to wake up that early. And I wasn't sure if I could you know, go back to sleep because yeah, I usually have trouble getting to sleep and staying asleep. Oh, that was. He kind of pushed into the glove, and then he kind of almost like stumbled or something. He was not where I expected him to be. So anyway, I ended up going.
going back to sleep, and I actually did get to sleep, and I actually slept, I think, for like another four hours, and I got up pretty late today. So, I got, I went from uh, not getting probably enough sleep, so it was probably like maybe six hours of sleep or something, to like ten hours. My legs are still a little tired, so I decided I wasn't going to go for a walk or a run today. Figured, yeah, I probably needed a proper rest day. At least for my legs. So I tried to do some pull-ups today. I didn't actually finish my complete set because I was trying to also clear time to water the garden. The last the last two sets of uh, pull-ups I needed to do here. My arms are getting tired and so, yeah, let, me, let me start the water. Uh, let me do some watering and maybe I'll come back to it. Of course I did not come back to it. But yeah, I decided to water the front I saw Scruffy out here uh, this afternoon when I brought out the water, and I thought he was gone at first, but he was just around the corner. So if he was gone, I would have watered the back, but since he was here, I said, okay, I'm going to do the front first, and then one of these days I'm going to water the back and you're going to have to deal with it. And I grabbed the glove. So, uh, checked the ground for more gof gopher holes, and I checked the traps, and yeah, still no activity. So I will be curious to see if, uh, now that I've properly watered the garden, if uh, any new activity emerges. But yeah, I'm not expecting anything since it's yeah, been quiet for a few weeks on that front. I think yeah, catching three gophers may have done the trick. And then have to water the back. I might have time tomorrow, I don't know. Let's see. Probably should have did something yesterday, but yeah, my grocery shopping trip took longer than I think I wanted. Because I walked to the grocery store or Target. And yeah, it's uh, It's a couple miles, so it takes some time, and then you're actually shopping, so it takes time too. And then I have a big giant backpack of stuff, so walking back is a little more, a little more difficult. Scruffy's so starting to calm down here, and the camera's been struggling with focus again. So maybe it's time I give him his food. And there's the focus. Okay, let's get your food. So I think you're gonna like your white fish. So this fur looks pretty good. Feels pretty good too. Brushes just going straight through. Okay, I'm done. Hmm, so let's see. Let's see. 
when I first got up, I didn't see Scruffy. Then later, I saw him out in the exposed part of the deck, kind of in a corner, so it was hard to see because so I didn't get any footage, but I could tell he was sleeping out in the open. The sun didn't fully come out today. It was like partly cloudy the whole day. And then, let's see, a little after that I saw him sleeping on the chair. And then he soon disappeared. And that's when I brought out the water, so I didn't see him, so came out, and then as I came out, he popped his head around the corner, so he's hanging out on, in the exposed area again. So, didn't look like he was terrified of me. At the same time, he didn't seem to want to approach, and he didn't actually see, didn't seem that interested in the water, because, let's see, I, you know, eventually I went back in, and I continued to watch him. And even as I closed the door, yeah, he still didn't make a move to come any closer. And then I continued to film him a little bit longer just to see if he'd do something. And yeah, he didn't come. So. And then let's see. So uh, later on, that's when I did my pull-ups, and then I did uh, watered the garden, and so yeah, I didn't really pay attention to where Scruffy went. Because I was busy doing other things. And I noticed a few plants are budding or blossoming, so a few of the plants are still alive, <laughs> so there's still a couple of trees I'm really worried about, I don't think they're coming back. I think there's one right on the cusp, and I'm kind of hoping that one comes back, but I think the rest of them are, well, okay, there's one right on the cusp, and then there's four more that are, I think they're still alive, but yeah, I'm, I'm concerned. Um, and these four actually are the Japanese maples, uh, because three of the four, I think, were in decent shape before they started um, uh, shedding the leaves. Uh, one of them, I talked about last or uh, last summer, it was shedding its leaves way too early. I, did. I ended up pruning two-thirds of the tree, trying to save it. Um, it kind of held out, but it definitely started um, browning again um, much earlier than the remaining tree trees. So I was getting a little, I was getting concerned about that one. And that's the, particularly the one that has uh, extra sentimental value. Uh, that one I've talked about before, but it has. Uh, yeah, a story behind it with how my dad got it into the garden and one of his uh, best friends. He actually came from a, his friend's garden and um, then they transplanted it and, <clears throat> and yeah, they were, the friend was skeptical it would survive, but you know, it, it survived and, uh, and so yeah, I kind of wanted to keep that one alive. So I'm hoping that one comes back. And then of the three other ones, there was uh, at the very top of the tree, it, early on in the spring, it actually started browning at the very top. And so I ended up pruning the very top of it. The rest of the tree looked okay. And it, except for that, you know, it, it, the top never like, regrew. But the rest of the tree seemed okay. And then fall. Fall winter hit and uh, yeah now the, the whole tree looks terrible. Um, but uh, I'm 
kind of hoping that one also comes back, and then I'm hoping the other the other two are fine. But you know, I guess a few more months, I guess I'll know. So I did give all of them fertilizer in the fall. I've been debating if I need to give them more fertilizer. So I was reading something that uh, maybe not, so I don't want to over fertilize it I guess. So doing it I think either in the fall or in the spring should have been sufficient. Of course I'm not sure if I'm using the right grade of fertilizer, so I talked about that before too, the, the specific uh, chemical breakdown that I'm looking for, I can't seem to find in the stores, so um, using something else which may or may not be the right mixture. So let's see, then after it was done, yeah, I did see Scruffy sleeping on the chair. Here again, and then let's see, yeah it was maybe an hour to dinner, and then about a half hour till dinner, it looked like yeah, he woke up and he was just sitting on the chair for a while. I was hoping maybe I'd get him while he was jumping off the chair, but I didn't want to stand there filming him, filming him for the next 20 minutes. So, I went back to what I was doing, preparing dinner, preparing his food, doing the stupid ice rotation thing, which I'm really sick of. Start looking for freezers again, just, just to see if yeah, there's anything on sale. And haven't found anything. So, before the pandemic, I could get a, a good chest freezer for on sale for $130, I think, yeah, $120, maybe $120 at Costco, and yeah, now, I think the cheapest thing to get is about $200, and I think that's a, if it's on sale. Not on, and they're not on sale right now, so. And it's presuming I don't want to splurge for an upright freezer. I don't think I want to splurge though. So, the energy costs are going up too. So the nice thing about a chest freezer is they're more uh, energy efficient. And my understanding is it's twofold. Um, first reason is it's chest freezers tend to have much thicker walls, so i.e. more insulation uh, than the upright counterparts. And then the second problem uh, with the uprights is I think when you open the door, all the cold air falls out, basically. Whereas with the chest freezer, when you open it from the top, uh, since uh, hot air rises, cold air sinks, the air can't go anywhere since it's already on the bottom. So it doesn't really lose anything since all the cold stays at the bottom, which is where the freezer is. So for my bread is yeah they're much more energy efficient and since particularly it gets hot here in the summer yeah, energy efficiency would be uh, probably a good thing even though they're less convenient but yeah, my thinking is I get the smallest chest freezer standard chest freezer I can get and it'll probably suit me. It's just me, so probably probably be fine for my uses, I'm thinking. Yeah, they probably won't have so much stuff where I'm constantly having the 
pull everything out to get to something. That's at least my hope. I don't know if that's true. But yeah, I'm still contemplating, you know, am I going to move? So I still got to deal with that. But if I get a cheap, so if I get a cheap freezer, I guess, you know, it's whatever. Throw a hundred, couple hundred bucks down the drain. Just, you know, cost of moving. So I pro probably won't splurge for a fancy upright freezer. Because it's a much bigger cost to throw away. And then in theory, if I did want to ship, like move my freezer, like smaller chest freezer would be easier to do. So I think strip is done. So yeah, there's a lot of fat or gravy or whatever that liquid is in the whitefish can, more than the other flavors. And I think the gravy helps prevent uh, the pate from sticking on the bottom of the bowl, so on days where I get a fresh can and there's a lot of liquid, I don't think he has to clean the bowl as hard. Okay, well, I'm gonna go in. So, okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.